All right, guys, it is time for our final presenter. She is one of the world's most influential seismologists, so much so that she is the founder of the Dr. Lucy Jones Center for Science and Society. That's saying something when you have a center name for you. Dr. Lucy Jones completed 33 years of federal service with the U.S. Geological Survey, where she developed the first major earthquake drill. Known for turning science into public action, she now focuses on earthquake risk reduction. Based on her forthcoming book, let's see if she can shake up our thoughts on the big ones in five minutes or less. Here she is, Dr. Lucy Jones. We have across the history of civilization come to disasters from a place of fear, fear of randomness, of the unpredictable. We sought to find patterns in them. We developed culturally appropriate explanations. The Greeks and Romans attributed them to quarreling gods. The Judeo-Christian tradition saw punishment for sins. Confucianism saw celestial balances needing to be preserved. And these allowed us to ascribe meaning to that fundamentally random disaster. As our philosophical and ethical systems became more sophisticated, we grappled with the logical inconsistencies of such a view. How could a loving God kill the most innocent among us? A volcano as the expression of a cuckolded God's temper tantrum no longer sufficed. We turned to science to explain the natural world, to put these events in context. Now, at least most of us see natural hazards as the result of variations in physical systems. Our improved understanding has shown us that many of the impacts of natural disasters can be reduced or eliminated through better design of the human systems that interact with the physical. Better management of floodplains, stronger buildings, warning systems, all help protect the lives of people and increases the capacity of communities to recover from disasters. However, our fear of randomness puts our focus onto the response to the moment the disaster happens and makes listening to urban planners and building officials before the event more difficult than supporting our firemen during the event. The biggest shift in recent years has been to move beyond a parochial view of our world. For the first time, a disaster on one side of the earth is helping motivate people on the other. Telecommunications gives us the ability to directly experience the suffering of others, deepening our empathy with the victims. Our last challenge is to see the victims, no matter where they are, as ourselves. In his book, The Expanding Circle, philosopher Peter Singer describes the evolution of ethics in the human species as an expanding circle of whom we include in our definition of us from self to family to tribe to nation and eventually all humanity, we are broadening our definition of who deserves fair treatment and consideration. The human response to the extraordinary hurricane season of this year gives us cause for cautious optimism. Where the initial news coverage of Hurricane Katrina blamed the victims, the coverage of Harvey tended to focus on ways the community united and how the unregulated expansion of impermeable surfaces made such a disaster possible. Although it is clear that looting also plagued its disaster response, stories of lawlessness did not dominate this time around. It allows me to hope that our circle of empathy is growing wider. The cautionary note, however, is that where the flooding in Katrina overwhelmingly affected impoverished neighborhoods, Harvey was more of an equal opportunity assault flooding poor and rich neighborhoods alike. Empathy is easier when you can see yourself and the victims. And what we see in Puerto Rico shows us even more strongly that it's a lot harder to empathize with Americans that don't speak English. The future is largely unknowable. We can see patterns and assess likelihoods, but time travels in only one direction. We cannot know which of the Earth's many cities will experience their big one in our lifetimes. But we can say with confidence that it will happen somewhere. And when it does, in our globally connected world, we will all participate. We will share in the distress of the victims as it is fed over our phones and computers. We will face our impulse to blame them, 
to try and understand what they did to deserve their misfortune so that we can make a pattern that says, this won't happen to me. We will seek out a reason that might spare us from suffering the same fate. We will, in other words, experience the fear that stems from randomness. But we can acknowledge these impulses in ourselves and those around us and choose to move beyond them. We can acknowledge our deep-seated, instinctual responses to disaster that cause us to form patterns and make it their fault, but instead draw from our enormous capacities for empathy, our willingness to help. We can use what we now know to help those most hurt by the disaster and to prevent damage in the ones to come. Natural disasters strike us down together, and it is together that we will get back on our feet. Thank you.